how you're doing? I want to preface this, right? Not a tutorial, because there are some things that have happened today that somehow managed to rectify themselves. I don't know exactly how. And a spoiler, well, not really. <laughs> I am so psyched and so excited right now. Same thing really. I have just spent a chunk of time doing something I didn't think would work today. I got bored today and I thought it would be funny to try and get VR running on a Steam Deck. So, <laughs> I downloaded the VR test tool onto my Steam Deck, the performance tool. I ran it and the results would have surprised absolutely no one. Absolutely abysmal. Pathetic, even. But when you note that it is running off of a few hundred quids worth of mobile processor, you know, the, the low power, what is it, like a 45 watt total between uh, GPU and CPU, it's an APU. The results were all right. You know, not to be completely deterred from the fact that Valve was like, nah, no VR on that. No, no, no. I was like, nah, Valve's lying to me. I went out and bust out my VR headset. The good one, the HTC Vive. Okay, not the good one as in the best one I own. Most versatile headset most definitely goes to the Oculus Quest 2. However, I wanted this to have the best possible chance. And so I went for the Vive for the simple reason that there are only two headsets in existence that I know of that function natively under Linux without some middleman program, okay? The Vive and the Valve Index both run natively with nothing but Steam VR. Steam VR is a native Linux app, so we're, we're already going, you know, we're, the, we're going to the races right there, right? The Oculus stuff would need something like ALVR or, is it ALVR? Yeah, so, or something like that to kind of work in between to get it to work on Linux. And we don't have a huge amount of performance uh, under, the, under the hood of the Steam Deck. We do for what it is, a consoleized PC, but not a great deal and VR isn't known for being um, frugal on requirements. So, I hooked up my Vive to the Steam Deck using my trusty Anchor USB-C hub. It ain't a cheapy but it's a goodie. <laughs> I went to the desktop mode on the deck for the first time. This is important because you can't install the Steam VR stuff unless you're in desktop mode. You can't run it unless you're in desktop mode. If you hook everything up when you're in console mode, portable mode, gaming mode, it will just treat a VR headset as a secondary screen. It will just try and output everything from the Steam Deck onto the split screens of the, or the two separate screens of the headset. That's not what you want. So I go into desktop mode, I've installed Steam VR, the full fat, I've set it to beta, and I've also set up Proton to be Proton Experimental Bleeding edge under the betas of experimental. Quite important for what I was going to do later or what I had it in mind for later. It should note that I errored out when I first tried this up. I can't remember exactly what the error was but basically 
it was trying to use, uh, it was trying to display the output of what should have gone on the headset onto the Steam Deck. And that's no good. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what the issue was called, but I think I might have had the issue on my main machine, Belial. And I, because that's, that's a, a Linux gaming PC too. But what I ended up doing was updating the machine, updating the Steam Deck, unhooking everything, making sure the operating system was up to date, making sure that the firmware of the Steam Deck itself was up to date, graphics drivers, all that magic fluff, making sure that everything was up to date restart and getting back to the desktop, plugging back in and then starting Steam VR. Then it worked. Turned on my base stations and everything worked. Initially, I was I was getting the error sound that the, 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 the desktop was just being used. Like the, you'd get like the two splits like you'd get in the in the performance suite test. You don't want that like they'd be gray and they'd be flickering. And I was just like, no, you didn't want that because it wasn't putting anything to the to the display of the of the headset. Um, I'm wondering if maybe that's because I had it plugged in before I went to desktop mode. But either way, I would recommend getting to desktop mode first, right? Make sure everything's up to date, reboot, and and yeah, um, plugged it in, got it to run in, and the the in the headset it said. For the first time, the headset came up without, without just being white or anything. It said, hey, check out the rest of the instructions on the, on the display. And on the display, it said, set up your play space. So I set up my play space in a, in a rough about way, just a standing play space, because I don't have a huge amount of space, and I'll probably bosh something if I did set up a bigger play space. And then it kind of went up to the Steam VR tutorial. In the headset, it said the tutorial was up, but it was going nowhere. Now, actually, I, I have to rewind a little bit. I hadn't set Steam VR to beta or anything yet, but I restarted it, restarted Steam VR, and it sent me to Steam VR Home, which is the main kind of environment where you're in like a like a cabin up a mountain or something. That's where you can launch your games and stuff like that. Now, I set, if you remember, I said I set Proton to Bleeding Edge. Right, bleeding edge experimental. And the reason for that is because VR chat under Linux requires Proton experimental bleeding edge. So because I'm a bit of a trolley bitch, because everyone's like, oh, easy anti-cheats ruined it, you can't run anything on Linux. We took a crack at it and it worked. <laughs> I went into the Udon duck pond world and I'm not going to lie, my frame rates were atrocious. When that poor little thing gets spanked, and it does, the, the display will start flickering, like as you start to turn things will start kind of juddering across the screen because like it's, it's, it's flashing trying to update both displays. And it was fantastic. Dropped the render resolution. I bumped the headset up to 100%. Initially, I dropped it down to 20 and it was, it was all right. But you couldn't read anything, right? Put it up to max and then dropped VR chat down to like 40%. I could read. I could roughly. I could talk to people. I had to get close to things to read. I could talk to people. I could move around maps. It was great. I, I went into the old Udon Duck Pond. There were fucking kids everywhere screaming about their avatars and stuff and it was great absolutely brilliant on the steam deck in the headset it was great and then i saw that my mate shade was online and i ended up sitting i shade i i don't think <laughs> thought that it would be a thing i didn't think it was going to be a thing because this was just a piss take thing i was doing today because I am a Linux user. I'm a Linux VR user. I have been for quite some time. I've been a Linux user for quite some time. I bought my Vive because it's Linux compatible, right? I jump in. We knew that it worked on the, the Steam Deck could play in desktop mode, right? And then on the desktop mode of VR chat. But in VR mode, I was like, mate, it's working. What? 
I'm on the Steam Deck, and because I had my knuckles hooked up, I could wiggle my fingers around and stuff like that. And it was interesting because Shade has quite a heavy avatar. It was a PC avatar. And I was in a pretty meaty world with nice lighting and stuff like that. I say meaty, it was an apartment with like candles and, and stuff like that. And depending on where I stood, I got the old stuttering kind of thing. Um, but if I, if I stood in just the right place and they weren't using such a heavy avatar, it was actually all right. I could move around and the stuttering kind of went down and that. And it, I was in PC mode on a fucking Steam Deck VR. And I must, I must have sat there, we must have sat for like half an hour, hour, just talking. Just talking VR and talking Steam Deck, talking hardware, talking software. And it was amazing. Did it look great? No. But even if you run stuff on like, on the, the Quest version of VR Chat, VR Chat's heavy. This thing struggles. To be honest with you, it reminded me a bit of, um, it reminded me a bit of the early days of Quest 1 when Quest 2 came out, where if you went into a heavy world and things got spanked, like especially like if you went into Rec Room and you played a heavy world, sometimes physics wouldn't even work. Textures would just flash at you and stuff. VR chat was kind of the same on this. Like I, I went into a world with my mate Divine and he's on a Quest 1 and for him it was just a flicker and mess. The Steam Deck handled it really well. Considering, you know, it can sit, some worlds are like 60 on desktop mode, some of them are, uh, you know, 45, 30, whatever. I managed to drive a full bore VR headset and have a conversation and hop worlds. Steam Deck. It's insane, absolutely insane. So we've got another challenge. Tomorrow, because my, my controls died, the only reason I stopped the conversation was one, because I had to do this, and two, my controls died. I'm going to try these. These are Tundra trackers. Or well, actually, specifically, I'm going to try and use the Tundra Super Dongle. Um, it's a singular dongle to attach multiple uh, body trackers to. So I only have a limited number of ports that I can hook up to my Steam Deck, based on my dock. If I use my regular trackers, which are Vive trackers, and use their dongles, I have to have three more ports. I don't have them, but I could probably squeeze one more port, or maybe two. I only need one for the super dongle. So tomorrow, for a laugh, I'm going to bump my res down even lower to maybe, I don't know, 30, 20, right? And I'm going to try and get in in full body, just for shits and giggles. Does it look great? No. Does it compare to this? Sometimes, right? But it was just amazing that it was full fat PC VR on such a small, low power device. A full on VR headset. And a Steam Deck. I'm sure I'm not the first to do it. I'm sure people have shot it better, but I was too excited to actually sit down and properly film something. I didn't even bother to properly catch it. As soon as it started working, I just grabbed my phone and just jammed it inside the headset and started pointing as I was kind of wiggling around in VR, like trying to point at the, the, the Steam Deck screen. That's what all that jank footage is. I was too excited to do it properly. <laughs> you know, if you do have errors, just make sure you have Steam VR set to beta. You have Proton set to uh, uh, the, the latest version, Bleeding Edge Experimental, right? Make sure that you plug in your headset after you go into the desktop environment of the Steam Deck and then launch your VR games in, in, in whatever you're trying to, trying to do. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I've also installed OBS on it, on the Steam Deck. I've also installed, oh, what else did I install? OBS... Caden Live, Discord, and they're all built, they're all on the store for it, or the, the app store, the repositories for it. They're all there, so you can just pull those down. I don't know if actually maybe, no, because I think they might be like snap packs, so they're containerized. I was gonna say, if it was pulling down individual dependencies, I wonder if maybe one of those is what fixed my renderer issue where it wasn't pushing things to the headset. Or it might have just literally been, as I say, the order in which I plugged things in, but. I am still super psyched. I am so excited and so happy that I was able to just sit in PC VR on that fucking thing. That was great. Was it like using my machine Belial, which is a, a 
3700X and a, a 3080, RTX 3080. No, not even close, but it worked. And that's great. Like I could pull the Steam Deck and a headset out of my backpack and, and play. Someone said, well, in fairness, can't you do that on this? Yeah, but mm, yeah. But I can't do, I can't do full body backflips. <laughs> I could put it in a backpack and literally do a full body backflip. Oh my god. All right. That'd be amazing. Okay, Valve, you've nailed it. That's assuming we can get full body to work. I, I can't see why we wouldn't, but uh, Shade has told me it's incredibly processor intensive and we don't have any wiggle room, so... If I ever bother, I will do a proper tutorial, but I'm sure that someone has already done a better one out there. They've probably even hooked up like an index or something like that, which personally I think is ridiculous because the resolution on the index is massive. So you'd have to drop the, the render resolution down anyway to get it to, to run on the, the Steam Deck without it kind of giving you a mini seizure as, as you overload the GPU and the CPU and it just, but amazing. Absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Didn't think that would work at all. I really didn't. When I started having the, the issues where things weren't coming up on the headset and it was coming up on the main display of the Steam Deck, I was like, I think I might give this up and try and get Halo to work, but stuck with it. Barely had to do anything. Still not entirely sure how the hell I fixed it. Fixed it. It fixed itself. Well chuffed. So, hope you're well. I'm probably going to head back into VR in a bit or play some Monster Hunter. With the, with the family. Divine and the, the wife are playing Monster Hunter trying to get the Hunter rank up before we go into sunbreak. So I might join in on the Steam Deck and I'll see you all with a bit of luck in the next one.